Hello and welcome to our podcast on joy of teaching international student. I am Dr. Nazrin Sultana, a teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College, and I am the host of this podcast. In this podcast, we share our teaching journey and wisdom about teaching international students in the college classroom. Today, my guest is Dr. A. N. K. Zaman, a full-time faculty at the college. Today, Dr. Zaman will share his joy and learning from teaching international students. Welcome, Zaman, and Shubho Shakal. Thank you so much, Nasreen. Uh, good morning, and Shubho Shakal. Um, uh, nice. Uh, thanks for having me here um, in these settings. Just for the people who are listening to us, Shubho Shakal means good morning in our language, Bangla. Zaman and I share the same mother tongue. Thank you, Nasreen, for um, clarifying this. Uh, that's really wonderful. So I started my teaching journey in Conestoga in January 2018. Mm -hmm. That's a very exceptional uh, year for me. Um, before that, I had um, worked uh, as a software developer in IT industry and software um, development industry. And also I did my PhD at the School of Computer Science at the University of Guelph before joining Conestoga. Okay. So uh, okay. since then, I have focused in academia um, along with industry, software development industry, and I started my teaching journey in that time. And I become the coordinator for web development programs. Um, and since then, I saw the growth of this program and I'm still leading and teaching that program as a professor and coordinator. Wonderful, Zaman. So 2018, right after winter vacation, it must be exciting for you. Very exciting. That's a very exceptional um, career development opportunity for me. And I love um, serving as a faculty member. And um, I teach so many international students um, since 2018. And I saw the growth of this program. And uh, it's a really a great opportunity for me being a part of Conestoga. Wonderful. So you already talked about the international student that my next question was about. So do you remember your first time teaching international students at the college? And how was that? Yes. Um, so in January, I, I was hired and I hired just a few days before my first lecture. Okay. So it was really challenging and exciting for me. But um, I, I am in post-secondary teaching since 2021. Mm -hmm. So that's in, not in Canada, back home. So I already have some back home experience in teaching. So I on board in that time. And I can remember that's the very first batch of web development program. Okay. Uh, in that time, that program name was Web, Develop web Design and Development. Mm -hmm. And I have only 15 students in the class and I started my teaching. Um, it's really a good experience. And um, my, in my PhD, I work with um, as a, uh, data privacy. So that's part of data. Okay. And I taught my first course is uh, database management system. So that's mm -hmm. again, talk about data. So it was a good match and I really enjoyed uh, teaching that semester. And um, I found the students are learning. That's one of the uh, joy of that time. I think uh, all teachers, the common joy we have when our students are learning, right? So of course. how many international students did you have in that first batch? Um, the class size was really small in that time because mm -hmm. that's the very first intake of web design, web design and development program. It was okay. 15. Okay. And do you remember any story or any surprises, something which you still remember? Um, I can remember when I first day came to the um, class to introduce that student. I found the students are anxious. I am also anxious. <laughs> um, then gradually, um, it's called the ice breaking, right? Mm. So I took the lead. I tried to know their name, become friendly. And I give them outlines, how to interact with, um, um, interact with the material and interact with the classrooms. And obviously, every faculty member has their own way to teach. Yeah, so Of course, we follow the college guideline. Mm -hmm. But um, so that's, I held them and I started 
gradually see their faces is um, turning bright. <laughs> and that's one of the wonderful thing I found uh, from that time of uh, teaching in Conestoga. I think teaching is like that, you know, when we see those changes of expressions on the faces and Correct. then we realize, yeah, it really is happening. Right, right. And it is the classroom environment and inclusiveness is very important. Yeah, exactly. So I know that um, it's been a while that you have been teaching, you are yes. a full time professor, the coordinator. So just looking back, what was your first or maybe, you know, some of takeaways from your initial days of teaching international students? Right. So um, the one of the um, important aspects of teaching is meeting new students every semester. Mm -hmm. So um, when I teach a semester, they move to new semester and we get a new student. And um, when we meet a student, uh, we learn them and because my students are from international community. Mm -hmm. So we learn their culture. Mm -hmm. uh, we learn um, their different aspects of life, integrating yeah. in new society. Yeah. And I can tell you, um, Canada is famous for his cold winter, right? Yeah. So uh, some of our students is really from tropical. So we often talk about weather. And that's obviously... Some of them saw their first snow when they are in Canada. <laughs> so that's a very special thing out of our syllabus work. Yeah. I think this is uh, something important you have said, even though it is not in the curriculum. But then I also have talked about, you know, where they can go and buy their winter boots at cheap price. Right. Kind right. of thinking, okay, where you can pay less and get the stuff you need. I know winter is difficult for many, many students coming from different parts of the world. Yes. So um, I know that uh, you also have international background by yourself, like me. So I, I was wondering that, uh, do, did you face any challenges while learning about teaching the student? Anything which you thought, oh, it was an aha moment for you? So... Um as I teach mostly international students, um, their needs are diverse. Mm -hmm. So uh, first, as I said, like even know the weather, mm -hmm. uh, same time they have a lot of new learning to integrate um, to our current Canadian society, right? Mm -hmm. So they have cultural differences, um, finding their own foods. Um, other than that, if I come back to the classroom, mm -hmm. uh, our assessment system, teaching system, our grading system, semester frameworks, mm -hmm. all are different. Uh, those that international students join to our mm -hmm. college from different institutes and country. So there is a transition and let them bring into the new system. That's one of the challenges uh, we faced and our students also face. But Conestoga has a very good uh, facility and um, co-curricular um, support or office support. Say we have international offices. Mm -hmm. So where if a student has some concern about immigration and new rules, we always refer them to international office. We have a student success um, and we have uh, dedicated counselors and advisor, um, even from time management mm -hmm. or any um, course-related help. Um, stress management, because sometimes students get stressed, they are away from family, yeah. they have part-time job, um, any study, sync, um, they have to maintain the synchronization between their time management and uh, time to their table. So those are those things, but uh, Conestoga has really good facilities to support our students. Yeah, thank you so much for kind of mentioning those support. Uh, going back to the one piece you talked about that they, uh, our international student kind of uh, face difficulties while doing the assessment. So can you probably share one of, the, one of the techniques that you have applied to help them to understand the kind of assessments they are going to have in the semester? Right. It's a very good question. And I like to point out another thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Conestoga has a uh, teaching and learning department. And I know, Nazreen, you are 
uh, one of the uh, facilitator from teaching and learning. And as a faculty member, I actually learned a lot from teaching and learning how to support international students. And I did those PDEV courses, um, how to support international students. So when we work with international students, um, even international students come from different parts or different countries. So we have to encourage them to collaborative work. Mm -hmm. And um, the special piece is clarity in communication. Okay. So those are those piece like collaborative learning and clarity in communication. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, rephrase the sentence or give an example so mm -hmm. that they can catch up. Those are those skills um, and those are those facilities really help them to learn well and increase their learning um, experience in Conestoga. Thank you for sharing that. And rephrasing is uh, really a good way because still today, sometimes I misread some emails because uh, it is written in a different kind of language. It's English, yes. but I kind of have to translate them into my mother tongue. They retranslate that in English so that sometimes meaning is lost in the process. Yes. So thank you for uh, sharing that. Um, just to make one correction, now it is EDEV course. So PDEV is about by professional development and EDEV courses are uh, there from teaching and learning. Right. Uh, thank you so much for making <laughs> this just clarification. just for the people who are listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Nasreen. <laughs> okay. And uh, so I know that um, you, you have been a coordinator for a while and I'm very sure you probably work with many, many new part-time faculty members. So... What is one tip you would like to share to a new part-time faculty or new full-time faculty who probably never have or never has taught at Conestoga or not have limited experience of teaching international students? Right. It's a very good question. And thank you so much for giving this opportunity again. Uh, we have a big team uh, with part-time faculty because our program runs in four different locations. Um, so Waterloo, Dune, um, Brantford and Milton. So the only advice I give you to my part-time colleagues, um, come forward and reach out to us mm. and do the essential teaching development courses that offered by teaching and learning Conestoga. Mm. And um, they might have different kind of questions. Sometimes they need to know administrative questions. Mm. Um, I need a day break or I need to defer something, mm -hmm. how to do that, then I will encourage them to reach out to our chair, uh, program manager, and um, um, uh, those are those the right persons to help them and support them on those um, issues. If they have any academic questions, like on material, mm -hmm. on course outline, then they should immediately reach out to uh, program coordinator, along with the program manager and chair so that we can mm -hmm. support them well. And yeah. um, I always encourage them, please reach out and ask questions. Don't suffer. If you <laughs> have questions, many faculty has the same questions and we can um, have a lot of solutions and support from our side to our part-time colleagues. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for mentioning all the support that uh, the department and the college has. I wanna, I'm just going to wheel back a little bit of because I realized at some point you talked about, about icebreaker, uh, those part. I just realized, you know, icebreaking is so important while teaching international students and to be honest, to all kinds of students. Yes. So um, I think, you know, for maybe a new person, what is one idea you'd like to give? You know, maybe they're going for the first class and with uh, many international students are there along with domestic students. What could be one of the, you know, icebreaker suggestions you'd like to give them? Right. Thank you, Nasreen. Um, I've been teaching for almost uh, 20 years for post-secondary level. Mm -hmm. So when I went um, or entered in a classroom for first time with um, 30, 35 new faces and start interacting with them, uh, first I do welcome everyone. So yeah. that's one of the things and it should be warm. So yeah. it's very inclusive and warm. Then a best thing to introduce myself so that they know who I am. Mm -hmm. After that, I will encourage every faculty member to know your students. Yeah. 
And um, although you might f uh, find that, okay, I have probably one or two hours in the classroom, but if you spend some time knowing each other, that actually give a better learning mm -hmm. and um, um, learning inputs from you and better learning experience for students. So know each other. That's my um, only um, advice uh, to break the ice and become um, understand and know your student and uh, become friendly with Thank you so much. You have said two very important things that know a student and give some strategic information about yourself too. Right. Uh, this semester I have shared uh, uh, the name and photo of my pet. And every other day my students are asking me, oh, how is right. Mishti? Mishti is the name of my cat. Oh. And uh, I realized that how much interaction happened right. uh, because of that one is small information that, you know, I have shared. And some of them actually came forward and they talked about the pet they left back home and they shared the photo. So obviously this, this is a kind of two-way traffic, right? Of and, course. And the warmth you have shared that, you know, that the yes. warmth is there. Thank you so much. So I just uh, given a uh, little um, uh, experience, like we like the word easygoing, right? <laughs> so we could be easygoing without uh, compromising our academic integrity and college policy. So that's actually helped uh, to make an inclusive classroom. Thank you. And uh, this is something uh, I have said to all faculty that um, you still can maintain academic integrity. You still can maintain all curriculum policy uh, with the ideas of being warm, being kind, being flexible. Right. So these are two very different ideas. Thank you so much. Some people kind of mix this up that uh, if I'm warm and kind, that means I'm a yes person. Yes. Which is not true. No. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is my very last question. Uh, it's kind of I'm wrapping up the wonderful conversation we have here today. And there is so much of joy and rewarding feelings too while teaching international students. And maybe would you like to share some of your rewarding experiences uh, while teaching international students? Maybe one or two that, you know, you felt really, really that, okay, this is what I teach for. Right. Thank you again, Nasreen. Um, you know, like as a, a human being, we are social. Mm. And while I'm teaching internationally students, or local, doesn't matter, yeah. it creates a network. So knowing people, other culture, language, it's always rewarding. Mm. And um, in a Canadian society, um, we have a diverse community. Yeah. And when we get international students, get graduate from us and integrate in Canadian society, they mm -hmm. become successful getting a full-time job or... Um, um, integrate in um, different professions mm -hmm. and we actually celebrate this success and as a faculty member when my student becomes successful it actually leads me a um, feeling of success and we always enjoy this um, um, success uh, and diversity with our students and it's create a global network yeah so it's um, and it's our students mainly contribute in IT industry, whatever software development or different aspects of IT. Mm -hmm. So it's actually help our uh, country's economy and in a sense, global economy as well. Oh, thank you so much for sharing all these wonderful stories and experiences with us. And thank you Dr. Zaman for sharing your teaching journey with us today. I hope you continue sharing your joys about teaching international students with all of us. Thank you so much. And I'm signing off here. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nasreen. And uh, thanks so much for having me.